In this video, I will show you exactly how to do those cards animations procedurally using geometry nodes, using Blender 3.4. A few months ago, I created a promo video for the release of the deck of cards designed by the designer and YouTuber Balo. The goal was to do something as fancy as I did for 1000, but with more colors and also showing the day and night design features of the deck and its relation to different cultures. Besides the cool lighting and 3D models from Sketchfab, the most interesting thing in this video is the motion of the cards. In the 1000 Vivid Kingdom video, all the cards movements were based on physics simulation. Whereas here, they are almost all based on geometry node setup. With the ideas we had for this video, simulating the motion of the cards was impossible, and animating the cards by hand was out of the question. There are mainly two setups used here, and I will show you exactly how to build them. The first one is used to get the cards out of the deck into a flat configuration, and the second one, which I used the most, is the setup to allow the cards to flow along a path. This might be my favorite idea from the video, and it was inspired by the wind animation in Frozen 2. Let's get into it. I am starting this tutorial at the end point of my fully AUV unwrapped deck of cards in 5 minutes video, which allowed to create this deck of 54 individually textured and UV mapped playing cards with their individual origins. Here I just set the material preview to the front and back of the cards to different colors, so we can see their orientation better. For both animations we will keep the collection with the deck of cards aside and only use instances of the cards so that we can work more efficiently and propagate any edits we would make to the source object. First I am going to show you how to procedurally get playing cards out of a tuck case and spread out on a table or in the air. Add a plane and a geometry node modifier to it. Bring in your playing cards collection and you can deactivate it in the outliner. The first step is to recreate the deck of cards in the modifier. Add a mesh line with 54 points and an instance on point node. Plug in the line and collection info node. For now the whole collection is instanced over each point and each point is 1 meter apart. Lower the offset on the z-axis and choose pick instance and separate children to instance each card. Also set reset children so we don't carry over the offset position of our playing cards in their original collection. With this geometry node card deck, we can easily change the card's position by swapping the mesh to instance the cards on. With a grid of 11 by 5, we can get all the cards laid flat on the table. But now we want to blend the position between those two objects. Let's plug back our mesh line into the instance node and start by capturing the positions of its points. On the grid mesh, add a sample index to sample the position of the points from there. If you test it with a set position node, you will see that it just samples the position of the index from the node. So make sure to plug in an index node. Now our deck is properly instanced to this flat configuration. And to blend between the two positions, add a mix vector node and blend between the sampled position and the captured one like this. To make it look like the cards are coming out of a case, I add a transform node here to move the grid aside. That looks already pretty neat. But if you look from above, the cards are linearly blending between the two positions in a V shape, and they would clip the sides of the tuck case. We would prefer them to come out in a more curved fashion. So let's add a parameter to control the blending mode from the modifier panel, and we will change the speed at which the cards change position on each axis. Set the second parameter of the mix node to non uniform and plug the factor parameter you added to the factor of the mix node through an RGB curve. This curve will allow us to change the interpolation of the blending on the R, G and B channels, which will be mapped to the X, Y and Z channels. Here I want to correct the blending on the Y axis, so that's the green channel. 
by playing around with the curve, I got to this result. But the cards all come out at the same time, that's a bit boring. A simple way to make this more interesting is to get the position of the cards from the deck, so we start up dealing them by the top, and convert it to a float with the vector math length operation, and add that to our factor from before. With the multiply first, we can have some control on the effect, and that's already way more interesting. In the same way, I like to add some scaled noise to this, so it's more random and interesting. To remove jitter later, make sure to plug the initial card's position into the noise vector input. Here you can control the exact way the cards blend between the two positions, so you can play around with for example map range to have finer control. I also like to put a math wrap operator, or ping pong, which here makes the effect symmetrical. For now we only edited the position, but for the animation to be more interesting, we can play around with the rotation too. I am just changing the color of this node to show that it controls the blending, and refer to it later more easily. Add an instance rotate node and a mix vector node as usual. Here I want to have the card rotate in between the two positions. So my blending curve looks like a bell, and allows to mix between no rotation and a slight rotation only at the middle of the movement. The exact same way you can add a slight position offset on the z-axis, so the card goes in the air before settling. And this is the result now. A final thing I would like to add for this setup is for the cards to conform to the rotation of the grid object. Duplicate the sample index node and make it sample the normal of the grid. Add an align vector to Euler node and use it on a rotate instance node with the mix vector node so that this new rotation is only applied to the final position on the cards when they are mapped to the position of the grid. And here are the basic principles of this animation setup, and all the way you could make this setup more interesting and fit for your needs. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you like this content. Now let's move on to the setup that allows the cards to flow along curve. With the Bezier curve, add the geometry node modifier to it. In edit mode, in the viewport overlay settings, you can enable the normal's display to better see the direction of the curve and its tilt. As before, you can drop in the card's deck collection and instance it on the mesh line to recreate the deck with separate children, reset children, and pick instance. With the deck created, we need to move it to the start of the curve. Add a sample curve node with factor set to 0 for the start of the curve, and set its position to the translation input of a transform node. To confirm the rotation, it's a bit tricky, we need to use some align Euler to vector nodes, and stack them so that we first align the y-axis to the tangent, and the x-axis to the normal. With the rotations plugged as so, the deck is moved correctly onto the curve. I am adding a joint geometry node at the end of the line to combine the original curve so we can always see it. Now let's move the cards along the curve. Add a set position node and a resample curve node set to 54 points. And just like before, we are going to use the sample index node to copy the positions of the points by index. Like so and plug the values into the position input of the set position node. Perfect. Now you can edit the position of the cards along the curve with a trim curve node before resampling it. Let's add some input to control the start position and the width of the card train with a value and an add node. Now the problem is that our deck of cards is squished along the curve. 
so we need to keep the relative position of the cards, as we said before. To do that, we will convert the absolute position value to an offset relative to the position of each card. Add a vector math node set to subtract, and plug in the position from our sample curve node from before. That's better. The cards are still all jammed together, but that's because they are leaving the deck tangentially. We can add the transform node to our deck to tilt it slightly around its x-axis to fix that. Now it's time to rotate the cards so that they follow the orientation of the curve. Add two other sample index nodes beside the position one to sample the normal and tangent of the curve. To get those values easily, we can replace the resample curve node with the curve to points node. With those values sampled, we can add two align vectors to your layer, just like we moved the deck. So we align the y axis to the tangent and the x axis to the normal. And plug the resulting rotation into a rotate instance node. Just as at the position, we want to make this relative to the initial position. So add a vector subtract node and plug in the rotation of the full deck. Don't forget to set the resampled curve node to 54 if some cards are left behind. For some variety, you can add some scaled noise as rotation and position offset. And plug into the vector of the noise the captured position from the deck before we moved the cards, so that the offset of each card stays the same along the curve. Now let's make some adjustment to work with longer and more complex curves. With the curve edited to be longer, with looping and so on, first we can edit the trim node to be set to length, and edit the input values accordingly. That way, the length of the card train and its position are not affected if you continue to extrude the base curve. Now the biggest issue appears when your cards get to a point where the curve is moving a lot. The cards are switching rotation quite randomly, and the issue comes from the trim curve node, which kind of offsets the normal values of the sampled curve. I built this small setup to illustrate the problem. You can clearly see the influence of the trim curve once we get to a certain point. The solution is to keep a copy of the original curve with a huge number of points, and to copy the normal and tangent values from the points of this curve to our trimmed curve, so that our moving points sample the original values they are closest to, thanks to the sample nearest node. And that works perfectly. Let's add this setup to our node tree, Take the original geometry from the group input and convert it to mesh by length with a small increment. Sample index the tangent and normal vector from this node. Now plug those resampled normals and tangent values into our stacked Euler to vector setup and add a sample nearest node to connect the index. And that's it, now it works perfectly without some weird flipping of the card. And we finished recreating this flowing cards effect. With those two flexible setups to animate cards moving in the air, that's pretty much all the fancy tricks from this video. Hope it can be useful to some of you. See you next time.